How did I overcome any gender-related roadblocks in my career? Treat everything as an obstacle to be overcome, not as an objection which is insurmountable. Socially, I treated all persons, male and female, as equals. Professionally, I built inclusive networks. By inclusive, I mean networks formed on the basis of mutual respect. I will quote E.O. Wilson's letter to a young scientist, and I encourage you to read his book. First and foremost, I urge you to stay on the path you've chosen and to travel on that path as far as you can. The world needs you badly. In my career, I've tried to not respond to backstabbing attacks from other women or men, even when I recognize it clearly. Backstabbing belongs to objections, not obstacles. I sought excellence in all the people that I meet. I trained all who worked in my supervision to be able to take their place and instilled confidence in their ability. Working with Rotary International brought me into contact with leaders of every community in all walks of life, both men and women. We built trust. Just be aware when an assertive woman says something, it might be characterized as bitchy and ambitious. When a man says the same words, it will often be interpreted as profound and just what was needed. This is a cultural response and divide. I learned my practical craft from experienced men, went into the field and combined what I saw with the discipline of an academic background. Anecdotal experiences are not good enough. Networks that thrive on anecdotal information are known as good old boy networks. I needed to integrate the fundamentals from academic research with the basics of practical knowledge to become a quick study. I gave my co-workers the truth and didn't try to hide mistakes or the hard message. As director of research, I begged, bore, and stowed ideas from men with years of experience and integrated the ideas with learning a whole new world of chemistry. I gave them credit. They were amazed to see their practical knowledge turn into a manual of techniques and procedures. Always give people credit. This is your best weapon. It scared the life out of my supervisor, vice president, who'd taken years to learn his craft and who had been promoted above his level of competence as he had no managerial ski skills and didn't like to consider policy. When you get recognized by your peers as competent and as a contributor, this will inevitably lead to your being recognized as a contributor for policy. That's where your co-workers or immediate supervisor might become uncomfortable. Yet you cannot avoid your visions and actions. Treat your career as a series of obstacles to be overcome, not as a series of insurmountable objections. I still listen today. I try to find out where people are in agreement and where they are in disagreement and why. I bring them to consensus if consensus is a solution. I have become a master of many different careers and talk about data in a storytelling scenario. Everyone has a unique viewpoint. All contribute to a solution. I love the time when I got mature enough to be able to hug men and women and get inside their personal space without sexual overtones. This came about 50, 55 years of age for me. I learned it from Rotary and visiting Rotary clubs in Mexico and Peru. The traditional greeting is a bear hug. The man had never seen a female Rotarian, but the bear hug greeting remained in place along with my smattering of Spanish. The hug doesn't work for everyone. I just told the Australians that I was from the southern United States and southern women hug. It's a way to break down barriers, and you will have to find your own personal way to break down this barrier. It is age and sex dependent. Men do this all the time with the handshake. Men are often intimidated by shaking hands with a woman. 
You should think of your female handshake as a signal to establish a relationship of trust. Treat your career as a series of obstacles to be overcome, not as a series of insurmountable objections.